hello students uh, in the ninth lecture on calculus of variations in mechanics uh, we are uh, focusing on uh, three main things uh, one one is uh, we have already discussed natural boundary conditions uh, but here in this uh, particular lecture we are discussing few more examples regarding natural boundary conditions and then the isoperimetric problem what is this isometric problem and how it can be generalized actually it is generalized to conditional extremum problem and then certain unsolved exercises are given for your practice yes first uh, we already know that uh, if we are given such a functional we are given such a functional then here either you are given this boundary condition is some value y at x1 is a y at x2 is b then uh, we after determination of the value of uh, y x using Euler's equation using Euler's equation we obtain values of unknown constants using these boundary conditions but if you are not given these boundary conditions if these boundary conditions are not given in that situation we apply the natural boundary conditions we have already mentioned in earlier lectures that the if you are not given value of y at x1 if this is not given then you will apply this natural boundary condition and if this is not given then you apply this boundary condition if both the conditions are not initially given in the problem then you shall apply both these boundary conditions in order to find the values of the unknown constants in the solution of the problem for example uh, this is uh, one example here we have to find the extremal of this functional we have to find extremal of this functional in this functional you can see uh, the four parts are given the first is the usual case where both the conditions are given in second case we are given value of y at 0 only but y at 1 is not given or not prescribed that means you are going to apply the natural boundary condition in this case similarly in the third one y at 0 is not given but y at 1 is given so you will apply the natural boundary condition in this case also now in the fourth one no end conditions are specified so you will apply both the natural boundary conditions mentioned over here both these boundary condition you will apply here in that particular case x naught is uh, x1 x2 means 1 and in that case x1 is 1 so uh, you see uh, the first is the usual case so here we are going to discuss the uh, solution of uh, the second part or third part and fourth part you see in the second part uh, if here we are given functional is this so you can take capital f equal to capital f equal to this thing so now the Euler equation actually the general Euler equation is curly f over curly y minus d by dx of curly f over curly y dash equal to zero so that will give you here the value of this comes out to be from this is 2y and d by dx of you can see what is curly f over curly y dash uh, this is basically minus 2y and this is uh, 2y dash equal to 0 when you again differentiate it so the value comes out to be minus y minus y double dash equal to 0 and this is nothing but the situation given over here y double dash plus y equal to 0 or you can simply return write this in the form this way when you write in the symbolic form d square y by d square, d square plus 1 y equal to 0 so auxiliary equation this d equal to plus minus iota the general solution is given in this form now in this general solution we are given two unknown constants a and b and these constants are to be determined from the boundary conditions in the first case definitely we can find both values of a and b using these condition but here we are going to discuss the second case so you see here y equal to this that we are calling this as equation star so you can see the first boundary condition is y at 0 is 0 so you put here when you take x equal to 0 then y value of y at 0 comes out to be 0 
when you put here 0 and when you put here 0 that will give you that will give you uh, y at 0 becomes a cos 0 plus b sin 0 that implies what y at 0 is given to be 0 y at 0 is 0 so that thing is equal to a cos 0 is 1 and b sin 0 that is 0 so you can say the value of a equal to 0 so value of a comes out to be 0 after applying this boundary condition now at x equal to 1 here we put again in this equation because you have already obtained value of a a is 0 so you are left with y equal to b sin x that is here from equation star now we apply the natural boundary condition the natural boundary condition comes out to be y dash equal to 1 how it comes out you see the natural boundary condition is given in the statement here this one curly f over curly y dash at x equal to 1 it comes out to be 0 so for natural boundary condition what i do here curly this one curly f over curly y dash at x equal to 1 must be 0 but what is curly f over curly y dash curly f over curly y dash is here obviously twice y dash equal to 0 so 2 y dash at 0 equal to 0 not this is at 1 at 1 at 1 equal to 0 so you can say y dash 1 equal to 0 so that is how this comes out so in this way y dash 1 is 0 now you see uh, from equation star we have already obtained that y equal to b sin x yes now in this case we differentiate it y dash comes out to be b cos x when we take y dash at 1 y dash at 1 is b cos 1 but y dash 1 is 0 so b cos 1 is 1 b either b is 0 or cos 1 cos 1 can never be 0 so b equal to 0 so ultimately what we have obtained a is already 0 and here b is 0 the solution of the problems comes out to be this is 0 this is 0 so y x equal to 0 this is the extremal of this problem in the second case when one of the boundary condition is given in the same manner you can find the extremal in the second case is like this and in the third case you have to apply the boundary conditions natural boundary condition in both the situations that means here the boundary condition natural boundary conditions will be curly f over curly y dash at x equal to uh, 0 is uh, uh, 0 as well as curly f over curly y dash curly f over curly y dash yes uh, curly f over curly y dash at x equal to 0 is 0 and curly f over curly y dash at x equal to 1 is also 0 so using these both of these you get these as the bound natural boundary conditions and after applying these you get a 0 b 0 again the solution comes out to be y x equal to 0 in this case now the third and next next is uh, this unsolved exercise you can do in the same manner because in the first case both the conditions are, are given in second one condition third one condition and the fourth no boundary condition is prescribed so you will apply both the natural boundary conditions so next is the isoperimetric problem what is it so the general statement of this isoperimetric problem because here is uh, involvement of perimeter so that is why we are calling it as isoperimetric problem so general statement is among all figures with a given perimeter l which one encloses the greatest area a so this is the general uh, statement of the isoperimetric problem the more about the history of this uh, history and development of this isoperimetric problem and related studies uh, there is very one good uh, article in this american mathematical monthly you can and it is easily available on the google so uh, next is uh, this this is the general statement now particularly for a numerical problem we can apply the situation like this determine the curve of length l which passes through the points minus one zero and one zero and for which the area a between the curve and x axis is minimum so in this diagram uh, we are having two points minus one zero and one zero 
and from these two points uh, one, one curve is passing and the length of the curve is l this curve can be in any in any form suppose this is the curve again length is l this is a, another curve again length is l another curve length is l so there can be infinite many curve passing through these points whose length is l now problem is that under which curve between x axis and under which of the curve the area comes out to be maximum so this is our problem and this is the isoperimetric problem in fact so in this case what is given we are given the length means the perimeter of the curve and you have to find among all this family of curves under which the area is maximum so for this the uh, general formulation of problem comes up to be this uh, by definition of the definite integral the area between the curve y equal to y x and x axis is given by this formula minus 1 to 1 the limits are given limits of x y dx in our problem here x lies between minus 1 to 1 also the length of the curve along y equal to y x between the two point minus 1 0 to 1 0 is given by this formula keep in, in view with these facts now our problem becomes like this we have to maximize we have to maximize this area minus 1 to 1 y dx with boundary conditions that y at 0 y at minus 1 is 0 and y at 1 is 0 this is given there y at minus 1 is 0 and again y at 1 is 0 this these are the boundary conditions here so now uh, also length is given to uh, now our problem can be restated as maximize this uh, area subject to this condition and the given boundary conditions so in analogy with the concept from calculus it becomes a problem of conditional extremum it becomes a problem of conditional extremum if lambda is unknown multiply then we can form a new functional k equal to a plus lambda l or we can write k y is minus 1 to 1 so here a plus lambda l gives this and here lambda lambda is some unknown multiplier that can be determined with the help of these boundary conditions and this uh, uh, condition of this, this constraint so here now from this functional capital F can be considered like this which is explicitly not depending upon x so Euler equation deduces to this form where c is the constant this is our case 1 of Euler equation now we substitute the values f equal to this quantity then y dash is here curly f or curly y dash is this quantity 2 goes with 2 so ultimately we are left with this type of equation after further simplification we get this form now again further simplifying this we obtain y minus c equal to this quantity and finally this 1 plus y dash square is this quantity now y dash means dy by dx so we write in this form further simplification gives rise to uh, y minus c dy and this quantity dx now we take this in numerator minus 1 by 2 y x and we integrate on both sides we multiply this minus 2 and divide with minus 2 so that it reduces to the form integral function raised to power n and derivative of that function whatever is here then integral comes out to be fx raised to power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 so here fx means this whole f, the whole quantity in fact this is fy is the whole quantity and this is the derivative of the inside uh, function this one and uh, after applying this formulation we get this type of the result and c1 is the constant of integration this one we are calling as c1 minus c1 here in fact so after squaring and adding it reduces to this form this is obviously an equation of the square whose center lies at c1 c and radius is lambda hence uh, the required curve required curve out of uh, this uh, family out of this family the required curve is a circle now in this circle equation of circle uh, c1 c and lambda are undetermined constants so we have to determine all the all these three constants uh, using the given boundary conditions and the constraint on the constraint of length 
So you using the boundary condition y minus 1 is 0 and y1 is 0 in equation 3 we have c1 is 0 and lambda equal to 1 plus c square. Hence this equation 3 reduces to this form. Further simplification gives if this is equation number 4 we write in this form. Now we are adding c square on both sides consequently this reduces to this form. Now the value of unknown constant c can be determined using equation 1. What is equation 1? This one, the constraint. Now from equation 5, from equation 5, if we differentiate on both sides with respect to x, we get this. So dy by dx is this and y dash is comes out to be this. Now because you have obtained the value of y dash, but here you have to eliminate this y minus c. The value of this y minus c can be obtained from this equation number 5 and substitute over here so we get this so after substituting the value of y dash in equation one we have this quantity this thing now a further simplification gives rise to this type of the form now this is an even function because when you write minus x in place of x this remains unchanged so limits of integration changes to 0 to 1 and 2 will be there and this is this property of definite integral because of this this reduces to this form now further uh, the after integrating this the formula of integration is this so using this integral this comes out to be equal to this thing now substituting the lower and upper limit v reduces to this form now this is a transcendental equation and where c is the variable that you have to determine in fact it is constant but if you are determining determining it from the equation now c can be treated as a variable over here so now uh, this is a transcendental equation so exact value of this transcendental equation cannot be obtained directly from this equation so uh, let us go for some approximate value because ultimately we have to get some solution of the problem so for approximations what we do uh, this sign of this quantity sine of x you know the formula sine x equal to this the infinite series now from this infinite series we can uh, omit certain term for the small values of x let us uh, omit the terms higher than or equal to x raised to power 5 so we are left with only these two so sine x is basically approximately equal to this x minus x cube by 3 factorial so here x means this quantity l by 2 under root 1 plus c square so now we are applying this formula here so x means this whole quantity minus 1 by 3 factorial and its q is this is approximately equal to this because we are approximating we are getting the approximate solution not the exact solution so you can see 1 plus c square is approximately equal to this the further simplification gives rise to this type of the formula then here from this one we can obtain value of c square and c is ultimately this so substituting this value of c in equation 4 we get desired circle which encloses the maximum area under a given length under a given perimeter so this is a, a solution of isoperimetric problem now this isoperimetric problem gives rise to a general uh, problem that is the problem of conditional extremum so in general this uh, can be stated as a general problem of conditional extremum can be stated as let fx y y dash and g y y dash be given and we intend to de determine y x for the functional i of y given by equation subject to the constraint j of y equal to this where k small k this is given quantity then uh, to solve this type of problem we form a new functional in this way k of y equal to a to b this one plus lambda times this one where lambda is undetermined constant that can be determined using the boundary condition and the constraint 2 so uh, this is the general problem of conditional extrema so we can uh, solve certain problems in the same manner as done in the isoperimetric problem this is functional and this is the constraint these are the boundary condition you can get the solution second problem is similar type answers are given over here and this is the third problem for the conditional extremum so you can solve these problems you can practice and answers are given over here and uh, you can also refer this book help and, and forming
थैंक यू